people can't marry white people. Hey now. It's Garnet from Steven Universe. Kids, don't be racist. My oh my, Cartoon Network and Warner Brothers Animation just dropped a lot of news pertaining to their upcoming slate on HBO Max. Coupled with yesterday's revelation of brand new Steven Universe shorts, and the video I dropped last week pertaining to the future of Cartoon Network, I kinda wanna cover all of this under the lens of a follow-up video. Now that a taste of Cartoon Network's future is out in the open, what exactly do we have to look forward to? Is the future looking bright, or is it time to wave the white flag? Well, only one way to find out, shall we? So without further ado, let's dive in. Now, the first thing I want to say is that, in regards to last week's video, these press releases seem to indicate that my overall thesis was correct. The future of Cartoon Network will be reboots, will be revivals, but there will also be brand new IPs, but again, it really seems like they're looking for new ideas from established animation veterans. Case in point, the first announcement I want to talk about today, a brand new series from Gendy Tartakovsky, creator of Dexter's Lab, Samurai Jack, Symbionic Titan, and Primal. God, he's really been doing the most, and I am all here for it. According to Collider, Gendy Tartakovsky is truly unstoppable. The Russian-American animator, who has created such a beloved, critically acclaimed animated series, such as Dexter's Lab, Samurai Jack, and the original Star Wars The Clone Wars, and directed three hit Hotel Transylvania movies, is back at it again. It was announced today that he has a new series, Unicorns Warriors Eternal, that will be headed to Cartoon Network and HBO Max. The official release says that the new show will follow a team of ancient teen heroes as they work together to protect the world from an unforeseen omen. With themes of the supernatural weaved with adventure, the series captures fun, yet mysterious character-based storytelling for kids, teens, and parents alike. Further describing the series, the official release states that the show will center around a team of Asian heroes protecting the world from an ominous force. Throughout history, unicorns have symbolized the virtuous, appearing to ensure that goodness reigns. When the reawakening of our heroes comes too early, they find themselves in the bodies of teenagers. Damaged as a result, their memories of who they are and the history of the unicorn over the centuries have been lost, with some of their magical abilities weakened and fragmented. Not only do they have to protect the world against the prevailing darkness, they have to do it while navigating the unexpected laughs and humor that come with teen angst and emotions. 25 years ago, Dexter's Lab was Cartoon Network's first original series. It launched an incredibly creative relationship that continued to prosper throughout the years. Today, I am so proud and honored to be able to create an animated series for HBO Max and Cartoon Network and start a new relationship, fostering more bold and original storytelling. Unicorn Warriors Eternal is going to be crazy cool and I can't wait for people to see it. It currently does not have a scheduled release date. Such things are tricky in the time of COVID-19. And just looking at the key art release alongside it, uh, Oh god! It looks just like Symbionic Titan! How could I not be excited? All of it really does just scream Symbionic Titan, but you know, with more fantasy than sci-fi and no giant robots, but god! If this does well, you know, I, I wouldn't mind if, you know, if they figure out the tax write-offs and maybe get a new season of Symbionic Titan produced, you know, maybe finish the series on HBO Max. I, I think that'd be a good idea. I know it's on Netflix right now. Maybe it can go on Netflix, but... Now hopping over to a variety press release, they mentioned that HBO Max is aiming to reach a wider swath of the older kids and tween market with a wider range of shows including live action fair presented under the Cartoon Network banner. Please, we don't need CN Real back. Why are you bringing back CN Real? He points to the new animated series Unicorn Wars Eternal and the words from Gendy Tartakovsky. Unicorn revolves around a group of ancient teen heroes who team up to save the world from evil. The anthology style series is built as inclusive for all ages and inspired by myths and folklore from around the world. Now, Unicorn also excites me because it sounds like the next logical move after Infinity Train. Now, I'm really hoping Infinity Train is going to get renewed because of their focusing on shows aimed at all ages that everyone can enjoy, then Cartoon Network, HBO Max, needs to pay their respects to their streaming show that really started this brand new era. Infinity Train deserves all eight books. Come on, Cartoon Network. Greenlight the Saga. Continuing the Variety article, the series from Cartoon Network Studios is set to bow next year on HBO Max. Unicorn is in keeping with another ambitious tune production in the works for HBO Max next year from Warner Brothers Animation and Steven Spielberg's Amblin TV. Gremlins, Secret of the Mogwai, set in Shanghai in the 1920s, decades before the time frame of the 1984 Gremlins live action feature helmed by Joe Dante. Warner Brothers KIAC has struck a deal for three more projects to come 
from popular children's author Mo Williams, he created Sheep in the Big City, and Greg Silverman's Stampede Ventures Banner. There's an animated series based on Willem's Unlimited Squirrels franchise, a musical special, Naked Mo Rat Gets Dressed, The Rock Special, <laughs> Okay, that just sounds amazing. And a pilot order for a live action immersive series dubbed Cat the Cat's Show the Show Show with you the you. That's the tongue twister if I've ever seen one. Even just looking at that title makes my head hurt, Jesus Christ. And although it is live action, I find it interesting that they mentioned that it's immersive. It sounds like it's going to be one of the interactive choose your own adventure type shows that's coming out alongside Netflix's Battle Kitty and other Netflix properties already have this choose your own adventure type format, including a Captain Underpants special. If there is something here with this interactive format, I'm glad they're going along with it. I personally haven't gotten behind interactive content myself, I just haven't really been interested in trying one out, but it does seem like it would have a lot of rewatch value as you choose different paths, different outcomes. It probably gives your brain a little bit of a workout. And you know, if there was one pre-existing Cartoon Network IP that would be great for the interaction format, it could be the one where one of the main characters has the ability to see into multiple timelines, I'm just saying. And skimming over one more announcement that has its own press release I would rather read, I want to end this article in a quote that pretty much realizes exactly what I was saying last week. We have have characters that have been around for decades that people love, and we have people who have a strong point of view on how to modernize them. It's really delightful. But there you have it. They're saying it right there. They're looking at their catalog, their entire library of Warner Brothers and Cartoon Network, and looking at which of those IPs are worth bringing back. What's worth rebooting? What's worth reviving? But hopping back over to Collider, we have one more press release from these big announcements. And that concerns the return of guess what? Or should I say, guess who? The Tiny Toons! I understand with a varying age range in my audience, the magnitude of that statement probably flies over some of your heads, but that ain't gonna stop me from rejoicing. Buster Bunny and his Looney Tunes cohort are coming back to our TV screens after 25 years away with the new animated series, Tiny Toons Looniversity. The new animated series is a reboot of the early 90s Looney Tunes spinoff, Tiny Toons Adventures. Tiny Toons ran for three seasons and racking up nearly 100 episodes as it followed the continuing adventures of the Looney Tunes bunch via the next generation of 2D rascals led by Buster Bunny. No relation to Bugs. Which, you know, that always bothered me. I was always like, you know, that has to be like Bugs' nephew, right? But, you know what? I, I'm gonna stop talking. On Wednesday, the Tiny Toons reboot, Tiny Toons University, was announced. The new half-hour series comes from Amblin Entertainment and Warner Brothers Animation, the duo behind the original series, and has already been greenlit for two seasons. Those seasons will air on HBO Max and Cartoon Network. Tiny Toons University follows Babs, Buster Bunny, and the rest of the gang following their comedic ambitions all the way to Acme University, the esteemed institution of higher hijinks learning, where young dreamers become professional tunes. Here, they form long-lasting friendships with one another and perfect their cartoony craft while studying under the greatest cartoon characters in history, the Looney Tunes. In case the Amblin Entertainment mentioned didn't tip you off, Steven Spielberg will serve as an executive producer on Tiny Toons Looniversity. Aaron Gibson will serve as a showrunner and co-executive producer, with Nate Cash from Adventure Time joining as a co-executive producer. Additionally, Sam Register, president of Warner Brothers Animation and Cartoon Studios, alongside Amblin Television co-presidents Justin Falvey and Daryl Frank, will join the Luniversity team as executive producers. Tiny Toons Luniversity will capture all the clever, subversive, and smart humor that made Tiny Toon Adventures such a standout series. Fans old and new will love to laugh at and with these characters all over again. Now, as a kid, I loved the Tiny Toons. I cannot wait to see them again. And going off this key art, they're gonna be aged up, but not necessarily aged up. I won't question it, it's a cartoon. I do think the inclusion of the original Looney Tunes would be great for parents watching. If you know they're not already watching because it's the Tiny Tunes. I hope the modernization doesn't go too far, considering their tweet announcing this mentioned that it's gonna be lit. And, you know, I just have no comment on that. I'm also taking note that alongside Batmobile, this is being simulcast on both Cartoon Network and HBO Max. I hope to see more of these Cartoon Network Warner Brother produced properties end up on Cartoon Network on television because, again, there's just something that feels more bitter than sweet about so much of Cartoon Network's library, old and new, being locked away behind streaming. And if this could lead to a more diverse lineup, then I'm definitely here for it. And last but not least, let's talk about the new Steven Universe shorts. 
Did you ever expect Garnet to straight up denounce racism, especially after the show was over? Well, it happened. According to Entertainment Weekly, Steven Universe returns to teach kids to not be racist in new PSA. Listen to Garnet. You have to acknowledge racism to work against it. Steven Universe is back, but not in the way you may have expected. After concluding the beloved animated series with Steven Universe Future in March, Emmy-nominated creator Rebecca Sugar developed a series of anti-racism PSAs with her collaborator and husband, Ian Jones Cordy, creator of OKKO OK Let's Be Heroes. The first PSA titled Don't Deny It, Defy It is one of four that will roll out every two months, with characters from Steven Universe teaching kids to be anti-racist. Tuesday's debut highlights Garnet, voiced by Estelle, who assists two boys on the PSA film set to help their co-star realize that you have to acknowledge racism to work against it. Sugar and Jones Cordy co-wrote and co-directed the animated video. The PSA was made in partnership with Dr. Alan Lipscomb, a specialist in providing inclusive, anti-oppressive mental health services. It also comes with the launch of a new Crystal Gems Speak Up website with a list of resources like the National Black Justice Coalition and National Bailout Collective, provided by Cartoon Network. One, I'm glad that Cartoon Network is still producing new Steven Universe content. The previous run of self-esteem PSAs actually did air on the network, so I'm assuming this would be the case as well. Now, I'm not gonna say, oh, if these PSAs are well-received, we're gonna get new content. No, <laughs> that's just not happening. That's not realistic. But I will say, keeping Steven Universe in the public eye and examining which popular IPs are worth reviving could spell very good news for the future of the franchise. I personally believe that Steven Universe Future was the last animated series from the network. But with HBO Max, I wouldn't mind Steven Universe going down the same path as another Carnaric series that also made a comeback two years after its conclusion. Adventure Time, with the Distant Lands miniseries. Much like Adventure Time, Steam Universe coming back for a handful of specials would be incredible, and I think would be the appropriate route to take. I don't necessarily believe the franchise needs another overarching story, but I do believe single hour-long stories that tell a satisfying adventure, unravel more of the lore, sprinkle in hints of fan service here and there, like introducing new fusions and gems, would ultimately benefit Cartoon Network, HBO Max, and fans alike. The television series may be over, but I believe Steven Universe as a franchise can prosper for a long time to come. Not to mention, its latest video game, Unleashed the Light, is still having new updates. Recently, Paradot was added with a Square Dot story, before then we got an update that allowed players to play as Hestonite, and Grumpy Face confirmed that there's more content to come. So again, the franchise is still alive. It's really only the animated series that's over. And with a franchise still kicking, the future could be open for anything. And I'm just gonna be honest, I did not expect my most recent Steveners video to do so well. Between that and the response I've seen towards the short on social media, it's clear that there's still a lot of interest and love for Steven Universe. So I hope Cartoon Network can keep that in mind going forward. Obviously, as long as Rebecca Sugar is eager to create more stories. Ultimately, this round of news has me slightly more optimistic for Cartoon Network's future, at least to where I was a week ago. But I'm still kind of worried. There are still guards up. We don't know what these reboots can look like. Not all reboots are created equal. But if they get more familiar faces creating original IP that from the start is free to explore beyond the 6 to 11 demographic, then I think we could be heading in a pretty good direction. But keep in mind, one of these headlines was titled that Warner Brothers Animation is taking over HBO Max, which, as I said last week, while the Cartoon Network branding will always be strong, I'm kind of worried about what AT&T is going to do about having two different animation studios. That kind of headline does not inspire confidence that Cartoon Network and Warner Brothers Animation will remain two separate entities. But as I always say, only the future will tell. But as always, these are just my thoughts and I want to hear yours. What do you think? How do you feel about the future of Cartoon Network with today's announcements? Are there any shows you want to see make a comeback? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below or tweet your thoughts at RoundtableVids. And for more of my own thoughts, you can find me at AltricVox. We're also on Instagram. Help learn to grow by either becoming a member of this channel or supporting us over at Patreon. Link in the description. If you enjoyed this video, please throw a like and subscribe to the round table for more great cartoon content. Thank you for watching and I hope you have an awesome day. Altric Fox, signing out.